Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Zed Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little guide video here on Yorick. So right now, this account that I'm playing on is sitting, it's sitting unranked right now, but the games or the ELO that I'm playing in on this account is around silver and gold. So far, I'm 18 and two, so I've won 18 games, lost two games on this account right now, and this video here is gonna go over just basically how you can destroy low ELO with Yorick. So right now, Yorick is sitting at the highest win rate for any low Low elo champion just overall he's got the highest win rate right now so if there is one champion you should be looking to play right now if you want to climb out a low elo then it's definitely yorick and then if you would like to request a champion that i do play in this series if you would like to get some coaching or play a duel game with me at some point then you can check out my camelot page there is going to be a link down in the description below so to begin here, let's first take a look at what runes and what build you should be looking to run on Yorick. So for runes, either Conquer or Grasp is the keystones or are the keystones that you should be using. Conquer, if you're in a matchup to where you're not going to be able to ever proc Grasp. So if you're in a ranged matchup, Conquer is better. Also, if you're in like an easier matchup, I would run Conquer as well. But if you're in harder matchups or you're in matchups to where you can look to get a lot of Grasp procs off in the laning phase, then I would run it in that situation. And then for the build on Yorick, always Trini Forest Rush item. You pretty much don't want to skip out on Trini Forest on Yorick. For second item, it's going to be Sterix most of the time. You're going to see some people go Death Dance second, and if you're really snowballing in the early game, if you don't really think you need any defensive stats, then you can go for Death Dance as your second item. And then after you do grab your Trini, your Sterix, usually ZZ Rot as your third item is good. Really helps you split push there in the mid to late game. If you don't really need the split push power though from the Z easy rot then you can just go for a tank item like spirit visage dead man's and then after you do complete your two damage items with the trini and sterix you pretty much do just want to go full tank after that so if we get into the game now, we're going to be going up against a Kled in this game here, and Kled is, I'd say, a little bit of a more difficult matchup for Yorick. Champions that can very easily destroy your Mistwalkers, or that do have stronger early games, tend to be good against Yorick. So one champion I would definitely recommend banning out pretty much every single game if you're playing Yorick is Yasuo, just because his Q is on such a short cooldown, he can very easily kill your Mistwalkers. He also can very easily dash out of your W, so you basically don't even have have a W against Yasuo in that matchup, so I would definitely ban him out if you are going to be playing Yorick, but up against Kled here, he is also pretty good against Yorick just because with Kled's E, he can dash out of my W, so I can't really utilize that a ton in the laning phase, but in this matchup here, basically what you want to do is you don't really want to play too aggressive in the early game. I think I end up actually playing a little bit too aggressive in the early game in this lane here, and I do end up getting punished, but when you're playing Yorick, the first few levels, until you until you usually do hit level 6, or until you do have 4 of your graves down, you do want to just be trying to play safe and CS. You don't really want to be trading. Notice here, like that trade is really bad for me to take there. If Kled hits a Q, he gets a couple autos off. I'm just going to lose the trade, so I definitely shouldn't have gone for that there. And then, yeah, you basically just want to let the wave shove into your tower. So now the way that you place graves on the ground, they're either going to spawn once in every 12 minutes in the early game or every time you end up executing a minion with your Q you are gonna get a grave on the ground so that's what, that's what you want to be looking to do in the early game with Yorick just try to stack up your graves with your Q then once you do hit your E on your opponent you can activate them like that they're gonna jump right onto the opponent and then that's the best way that you should be looking to trade with Yorick in the early game that's usually his best trading tool you don't want to just be looking for trades like with your autos and your Q in the laning phase you just want to be farming up putting your graves down once you get the three graves try to hit the e on the opponent and then if your e does hit you can activate your graves and your mist walkers will spawn and do quite a bit of damage to the opponent and then at this point in the lane here, the wave is going to be shoving into my tower. So what I want to do, what I, what I want to be doing here is I just want to sit back and let the wave shove in, try to last hit with my E there. I do end up making a bit of a mistake here. I just stand here and I'm not really expecting Kled to actually look to go on me, but he does a really good job of punishing me, me there. He just jumps on me. He uses his E to get out of my W and that's why Kled and any champion with a dash is pretty good into Yorick. So I end up disrespecting him a little bit there. I get punished for it. I do have to 
to look for a base here in a second or else I'm just going to lose all pressure in lane. I end up losing a cannon minion there. So York's early game, you definitely do have to be a little bit safer with it. You can't be playing too aggressive because if you do and you end up dying before you hit level six, then that's really bad. Uh, right here, I almost... I'm able to punish him, but I end up missing my E uh, because of his dismount, I'm pretty sure. So I might have actually been able to kill him there, but nevertheless, just looking to farm up here in the lane, not looking to do too much until I do hit my level six. I get a nice gank here from the Ramus, and he ends up killing Kled just before he can get, uh, get his mount back there, but we end up getting a kill. So pretty good for the laning phase here for me. It gives me a little bit uh, more time to level up, get to my level six, and I'm just looking to shove the wave in here, get a base in, and then grab some items and head back to lane. Now for your first base on York, you should either be looking to pick up Sheen or a Phage. Now it does depend on the matchup. I think I was a little bit greedy for going Sheen here in this matchup just because Kled can beat me uh, before I do hit level 6, but I think the reason to why I went Sheen is because I was pretty close to hitting level 6, and once I do get 6, I can look to pretty easily uh, out-duel this Kled and w beat him in the 1v1. So if it were earlier on in the lane when I did look for base and I wasn't able to grab my Sheen, then I probably would have ended up just grabbing a Phage or components to the Phage. And then if we just go back here, one thing you can look to do with Yorick is you can use your W to try to help yourself freeze the lane. Now, you can see I use my W there to try to like just stop the minions from crashing into my tower. Now, if I were a level, if I was level six here or if I were more ahead of Kled, what I would have done is I would have tried to walk into the bush here and try to just keep the minions in front of my tower. But Kled is six. He also does have this huge wave here. So I can't really look to uh, freeze this wave. I tried to with the W, as you notice there, I'm trying to keep the wave out of my tower, but I just can't do it without risking taking a ton of damage from Kled. But keep that in mind when you are playing Yorick, you can look to use your W in certain situations like that to try to stop the wave from crashing into your tower. So now at this point in the game here, level 7 on Yorick, I'm a level up on Kled right now, and once you do it 6, most matchups with Yorick, you can win if you do have your ultimate up. You always want to be playing around your ultimate. If it's up, you can look to play aggressive, and you can look to duel the opponent. If it's down, then don't be looking to play too aggressive, but I'm not too sure what Kled's doing right here. I have my ultimate up. I'm just trying to like bait him in, bait him in a little bit more here until I end up turning on him, so I have some more room to chase him down the lane. I end up popping my ultimate get a pretty free kill on him there. I might have not even needed to pop my ult, but it ends up working out anyway, so we get a kill there on the Kled, and a lot of people just aren't going to expect and, and respect the York damage once he does hit level 6, so uh, you can definitely use that to your advantage, and you can just surprise your enemies with how much damage you're going to do. Alright, so level 9 now on the York here. You can see that my ultimate is on cooldown, so I'm just looking to sit back here, wait for my ultimate to come up. Don't play aggressive on Yorick unless you do have your ultimate. If you have your ultimate, you're going to win pretty much every single 1v1. If you don't, you're not really going to... You're just not very strong in the 1v1 if you don't have your ultimate. So now that I do have my ult here though, I hit my E on the Kled, pop my ultimate. Mistwalkers are doing a ton of damage to him. I end up, I think I end up getting a kill here on the Kled. Now what I do in this situation is I just back up here, let my let my maiden tank the tower, and then I go in to try to get a kill on the Kled. I end up flashing. Not too sure if I needed to flash there, but I just wanted to make sure I could secure the kill in that situation. So that is one thing you can look to do though there with the Yorick. You can let your maiden tank the tower so that you can chase in after them if you don't have any minions uh, near your tower for you. So now at this point here, Kled's on a pretty long cooldown, so I'm just going to stick around, try to get free tower plating. This is one of the main strengths of Yorick. He just takes towers extremely quickly. You can get a really good gold lead in the early game from taking Demolish and just getting a lot of damage and getting a lot of gold from the tower plating. So 12 minutes into the game here, almost 13 minutes into the game, I do have a pretty good lead in this lane now on the Yorick and just always look to take the Rift Herald if you do have the pushing power in lane and if you do have a lead in the matchup. So that's what we look to do here. Ramus comes down, grabs the free Rift Herald and at this point here, if I were the Ramus, I would not be ganking this lane. He's 
below half HP. He's also level 7. Klet has Ignite. There's just no reason for him to really gank this lane. I'm already winning in this matchup right now, and the only thing that your that uh, Ramus really does here by coming top lane is he's taking my XP, and he's also just risking dying and giving a kill over to Kled. He takes two tower shots there as well, and he comes back in, and he just ends up dying here to the Kled, so it's just something that you don't really need to risk this if you're the Ramus. Just let the Yorick do work by himself. Um, if if Ramus was higher on HP, like if he was full HP, then I can see him coming in for a gank there, but the fact he was so low just doesn't really make a ton of sense for him to gank that lane. Now right here, Kled's about to get his remount, so I'm trying to kite away on him. I end up turning on him here with my ultimate, and then I just try to back off here. Like, when you're low HP on Yorick, just try to kite away and let your Mistwalkers and let your Maiden do the work. That's one of the like main strengths of Yorick. Uh, whenever his Maiden's up, it just can do a ton of damage for you, and you can just allow it to do the work for you. So if it is close in the 1v1, then just try to, just don't be sitting there auto-attacking the opponent. Just try to kite away and let your Maiden and Mistwalkers do the job for you. So 15 minutes in now, I do have Rift Herald here on Yorick, and I do have Teleport. So at this point, what I should be looking to do is just split bot lane. Come mid lane, get a pretty free pick here on the Morgana, get a kill on her, and then after this, I'm just going to look to head bot lane and get a split push going. My team is also doing pretty good this game, like my Katarina is 12 and 4, so my mid lane shouldn't really end up dying if I end up splitting, so I can just look to pressure the side lane, and in lower elos, what a lot of players will do is they'll just end up grouping and trying to kill the Yorick, and this can just really lead to your team getting free towers across the map and just getting a lot of free objectives. So if your team does try to group with you, like Caitlyn's grouping with me here in this situation, but she really shouldn't be. So if your team does try to group with you as Yorick when you've got Rift Herald and you've got your Maiden, just tell them to go to mid lane or go to top lane because there's not really any reason for your team to be here with you. Like in this situation here, I can almost like end up 1v4ing them. I'm pretty sure they send like 4 bot lane here. I end up getting hit by the Ash Arrow. If I had better reaction time, I could have flashed that and lived there, but I didn't. So, uh, but the Caitlyn there, like if she was mid lane, we'd be getting this tower a lot faster. There was just no reason for her to really be down bot lane. So, if you are playing with a York, just let him do his thing in the side lane and go take objectives around the map. Alright, so this is what you want to be looking to do on York if you're ahead every single game. Around the 18 minute mark, talk to your jungler, type in chat, tell him that you're going to look to do a 20 minute Baron. Uh, if you are like very far ahead on Yorick, then you sometimes don't even need your jungler and you can just solo the Baron, but it's always good to have the smite there with your jungler just in case. So just call your jungler over, get a pink in the pit, start up the Baron. The enemies are not going to expect it a lot of the time. Now, in this situation here, it probably wasn't the best. A decision to start up the Baron because the enemy team was in the vicinity. Like Nunu was right here, Kled was there, Corky was there. Their bot lane is still mid lane, but there's gonna be a lot of games to where the enemy bot lane is just farming bot randomly. There's just the support and AD carry down there. There's gonna be situations where you see the enemy jungler on this bottom side of the map. So in those situations, definitely look to take the Baron. Right here, it was a bit more risky, but. York just doesn't, there's no risk in really uh, going for the Baron uh, with York because you're not going to tank a ton of damage from it at all. So you can just start it up here. The Nunu, he doesn't even like end up noticing that we're on Baron, even though we did drop a ward. I think he didn't expect us to, to do it this quickly. Like York does a ton of damage to Baron, even at only 20 minutes into the game. So we just very easily take it there. We're going to look to come mid, and we can just look to 1v3 this at this situation. We're super fed here on the Yorick, so we end up just coming in here. We don't really care. We got our Sterix pop. Just look to team fight with Yorick when you do get Baron and you are super far ahead. Let my Mistwalker there finish off the Kled, turn on to Morgana, and this game is over at this point. Once you get Baron with Yorick, and once you are ahead, it's very, very easy to close out games. So when you do get the Baron, this is the point in the game where it is fine for you to just group with your team and look to push down objectives. I wouldn't risk like ending up going for a split push by yourself because if your team does get engaged on, that is one way where the enemy can look to c come back into the game and make a bit of a comeback. So if you got Baron, if you're ahead, 
If you got your maiden up, just look to group. It's just very low risk and you are going to be able to close out games super fast uh, with your strong tower taking ability. So right here, the enemy team just can't really do anything. I got my maiden up. They're not Now one thing that you should be doing like against York is you should be focusing his maiden. Uh, you should be trying to kill that like right away. Notice how the Ash is finally looking to kill the maiden there, but you always want to try to kill York's maiden as quick as possible because it just does a ton of damage and you don't want it to be up for a very long duration. So try to kill that as quick as possible. The enemy team didn't really focus it at all this game. So it just ended up doing a ton of damage whenever it was up. And that is going to be the game there. So pretty quick game on the Yorick. It does showcase that if you get ahead with this champion in the early game and you play around Harold, you play around the Baron, you're going to be able to close out games very, very quickly and get some really easy wins on this champion. So endgame stats here for this game, if you guys are interested, 10, 2, and 7 on the Yorick there. We end up doing most damage in the game, 27k damage. Let's take a look at damage to towers here because this is also a stat that you want to always try to be pretty high up on uh, with Yorick. Where is damage to towers? Uh, do, 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 total damage to turrets. So yeah, we did 11k damage to turrets there. Damage to objectives. <laughs> 23k damage to objectives, so York just takes objectives very, very easily, very, very quickly, so look to be using that to your advantage on the champion, but with that being said, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. Also, if you are interested in requesting a champion for this series, if you're interested in coaching or playing a duo game with me, then be sure to check out my Camelot page. Link will be down in the description below. But with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in my next video.